Hello, and welcome to a tutorial about using ImageX React with the TMDB API. Today, you can expect to start a project from scratch, clone it, and then actually take the current API from TMDB and use ImageX to optimize all those images and then deploy it via Vercel. And then we can also throw in some exciting little tips at the end, like lazy sizes and LKIP. So today, our hosts are going to be myself, Tom Dale, and Jamie Dawson. I'm the head of customer success here at ImageX. And Jamie, he's our solutions engineer here at ImageX. Hey, Jamie, thanks for joining me. Oh, of course, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, so I mean, I think this uh, little tutorial has a fun little history to it. You know, back when we were actually doing the hiring process with you, we were, you know, creeping over your GitHub and seeing what projects you'd made in your life. and. Uh, one of them you had mess, been messing around a little with was building with this TMDB API. And uh, we kind of just sprung it on you during a call saying, hey, do you want to try taking that thing you made and just add ImageX to it, you know? And, and I think, you know, it, it kind of took a life of its own after that, right? Yeah, I agree. Like, you know, it, it started off like kind of really me being really blown away by how much just like the basic... Uh, re, you know, React and React to SDK, like adding it to it, like improve the overall uh, user experience of the app itself. Like for example, like when I initially ran the application through uh, Google PageSpeed, it had a score of like 70. It was something like it was fairly good, but kind of lowish, you know, it could be better. But after adding ImageX, it actually bumped up the PageSpeed to 100. Yeah, and that's, it's amazing. So, so right off that, I was like, wow, this is wild. <laughs> yeah, I want to work for this company. Please hire yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, not really the only reason we're choosing the TMDB app. It, you know, if someone isn't familiar with it, uh, it's it's the movie database, right? And they are actually a community built tool where everything put in there is actually put in by users, and they use it, and that then becomes an API to query anything about movies. And there's some great imagery in there. It's a really good developer API. It's free to use. All you have to do is request an API key. It's become this thing where a lot of tutorials you end up doing have that TMDB uh, API as an example of one you could build a React site in. And uh, so I think that's why it's been like a really good choice for us to choose for this tutorial as well. I think it's also worth noting that um, they haven't endorsed this in any way. I think we have to, you know, maybe say that, but <laughs> I do hope they enjoy it still. So during the uh, tutorial, we're going to actually be using uh, a couple different tools, uh, not too many though. We're going to use React. Uh, we're obviously going to use the TMDP API. We're going to use uh, Lazy Sizes JS, and we're going to use ImageX, and then we're going to use Vercel to deploy. So all pretty uh, simple tools and all of them are uh, free to start off using. So I think that's really nice as well. Go ahead and uh, take us away on the tutorial, Jamie. All right, I'll go ahead and share my screen. I'll get started. Okay, so before we go ahead and talk about the actual code itself, I wanna go ahead and show the app like before we actually apply ImageX to it. So this is the app as it is now, it is, uh, it basically pulls a bunch of pictures and, and other sorts of data from the movie database API. It displays like the most popular posters. And uh, if you want to search it, like for example, if I want to up Spider-Man. Oh, so Spider-Man wrong. Spider-Man. It'll search up all the uh, movies uh, that pull up with Spider-Man. Now you look at this app and you think, okay, well, everything looks pretty good so far but and all the images appear to um, be loaded just right like for example if i inspect this image you know i would see that it's uh 300 by 450. but if i was to actually show like what this image is actually being sent as it's actually a pretty huge image um this image itself is actually being delivered at a at a 1280 by 1920 and that's like way way bigger than it needs to actually be so, and we also have like a whole bunch of other images that are being loaded all at once that don't necessarily need to be loaded. Like, especially like all the images way at the bottom that, you know, could possibly just, you know, have lazy sizes added to them. So those are the two things we're gonna do to this existing app uh, that you're gonna follow along with me. 
All right, so the first thing we're gonna to need to do is that we're gonna to need to go ahead and take this link. We went ahead and uploaded all of the demo code to GitHub. Um, I will be sure to have this link posted in the video description below. So the first thing we gotta do is just uh, copy this. I'm gonna make a folder real quick for testing. And I'm gonna clone it in there. So just do get clone and then paste it in here. So it'll take a couple of seconds for it to load the whole project. All right, so now we just CD into the project itself. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull this code up in my code editor. Desktop, testing here, project, okay. So right here, we just have the uh, basic code. There are two main files we're gonna be playing with and looking at. We have the app.js and most importantly, the movies.js component. So essentially what's happening here is that when it gets called, it, it calls on the movie database itself, calls upon the movie database API key. And then from here, it maps through all of the, uh, the 25 images that I've requested for that specific search. And as it's being called, it's looping through this um, component, which I call movies.js. All right, so what this is doing is that this is calling on this variable, which is grabbing the movie, the movie database API key. And then it's also applying the poster path, which is another uh, section in the API key for like the specific poster you're calling on. And if it doesn't find it, then it just uh, defaults to this, um, this basic template image in case like it gives returns like a 404. That way, like the image itself is a D. So this is good. And we can go ahead and run this and see what happens when you actually try to run it and make it live. Now you're probably, you're gonna see an error when I run this, so don't be alarmed. To run it, do uh, npm run start. Told me not to be alarmed, but I'm alarmed. Well, you shouldn't be alarmed. But uh, <laughs> so the reason this is happening is because you are not actually calling on an API key for the movie database. Every single one of these projects needs its own unique um, TMDB API key. And thankfully, it's really quick and easy to actually make one. And I'm going to show you how to do it and how to take that API key and apply it to your project. So to do that, just go to the uh, uh, themoviedb.org and from there you'll need to make like a quick account you might have to pause this video for about a minute or two to actually make the account and verify it so if you don't have the, an account for this pause real quick and then come back when you have an account all right so now that you have an account click on your um, click on your icon right here and go down to settings Now, when you scroll down the settings, you're gonna to go to the left here and click on API key, API. And then at the very bottom, you're gonna scroll down here and at the very bottom, you will see a button that will give you the option to create an API key and request one. You'll have to fill out a simple form with just like your name and like, you know, your email. It should take you about a minute. And then once you submit it after about, oh, pretty much almost instantly, you will have an API key. Now this one right here, um, I wouldn't normally recommend making your API key public like this, but I'm gonna be deleting it pretty soon. So it's all good. So once you get your API key after filling out this form, just copy this and go back to your project. Now in the root of your project, like outside of the source folder, you're gonna make a new file and you're gonna call it .env. So I'm just gonna paste this in here for now. And to find, like if you figure out like a which of the API key needs to be called, just go into app.js and you'll see what I'm doing is I'm using a package called .env to basically store it. So process.env.react app API key secret. Um, that is what it's called, which by the way, for those of you that don't know, 
Um, the weird thing about .env files with React apps is that if you actually want your keys to work, they actually have to start with uh, React underscore app and all caps like that. Otherwise, like for whatever reason, it won't work. So be sure if you ever name your .env files like a certain way or your .env variables, make sure they have React app if you're actually doing your application in React. All right, so save this. So I'm just going to do a kill, kill all minus nine no to just stop that. Okay, so let's go ahead and run our app again. So npm run start. I've never seen that kill all node. Oh yeah, that, yeah, it allows you to, um, like if you have a whole bunch of like node things running, if you want to stop them all at the same time, it's one of the ways you can do it. All right, so uh, we now have um, the entire app running locally and you've now uh, applied the, uh, the TMDB API key properly to your app. Okay, so now that we have the app officially up and running with the way it's supposed to, let's go ahead and start incorporating ImageX into it. So to do that, uh, the first thing I wanna go ahead and do is introduce everyone to our React SDK. So I'll be sure to provide the link to that in the description below as well. So this is our one of our many SDKs that we have for various different frameworks and libraries. So this is one is specifically for React. And we're gonna go ahead and get that installed so that we can just use React, the React SDK for the project. So to do that, I'm just gonna stop this project right here. So assuming using NPM, just copy this. It's NPM install React ImageX. So what this SDK is going to do is essentially build out like a, uh, a source set, right? Like it's going to generate a source set for you. And the idea being the images are some size right now, 1280, but they don't need to always be 1280. So if you generate a source set, you can offer the browser several different uh, options for sizes. And you know the way that ImageX can help in that, in this SDK is it's just gonna generate the source set for you, right? So you kind of have a really a responsive design just without doing really any work. Exactly. And to show you how simple it is to do that, the first thing I'm gonna do is just copy this. Okay. The first thing I'll do is I'll copy the top right here, This just to get ready to start importing it. So that'll import this. Now, just so we're not calling this anymore and it won't pop up as an error, let's just comment this out because we no longer need to call on this. And lastly, just give us some space here. Uh, we will no longer need this image tag. So I'm gonna go ahead and just comment it out. That way it could just be there as reference so we can compare the before and after. So, so now what we can do is that we can copy this. So that's the start of it. So let's build this out. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is that we're gonna need an actual source uh, that we have to call on. And, thank, and normally, normally I would have you guys like build out your own source, but for the sake of speed, I decided just to build a source for you. So this source right here is made in my uh, demo ImageX account. So the way it works is that uh, this source right here is this, as the web folder option, and it's connected to the, the, the movie database API. So this right here just understands like, you know, when it's calling on images, you need to get them from the movie database API as it's calling. So that's the way you would start it. And to build off of it, to make sure we get the proper path, you know, as you remember from here, you know, poster path, we got to add that as well. So poster underscore path. Let's go ahead and save. So if we did everything right, we should have a source set up and running with the ImageX React SDK. So just do run, uh, sorry, npm run start. The 
think I realized I made a mistake. Uh, there we go. I'm gonna remove that. <laughs> that that little symbol is gonna kill me. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay. So, so I mean, it looks the same to me. Oh, it looks exactly the same. Yeah. But if you go ahead and hit ins inspect, you'll see this is actually looks way way different from the code itself. As you can see right now, you got all of these, these different options you can choose from. And Tom, would you go ahead and kind of break down what these options mean? Yeah, so I mean, like I was mentioning this idea of building a source set, it's now essentially telling the browser, here are all these different possible sizes of images. And you can choose from any of them, right? Like here's a 799, a 512, 380, lots of different options. And it's, it, it looks like a lot of code and you might, might initially think, oh my goodness, this is gonna hurt my site. But putting this much uh, HTML code out here is actually not that detrimental at all. And there's gonna be so much more savings by choosing the actual right size image, right? So the next thing though, that it is, is still needed, right? Is us to tell the browser which image to choose. And, and, the, and the way this becomes responsive is when you put a sizes element, you're not going to say, hey, choose, you know, 441. You're going to say, hey, choose all these different options, depending if it's mobile, depending if it's this size or that size, right? So that's why you've generated so many different sizes, because you actually want it to dynamically switch, keep switching out the image, depending on what size the browser is. Yeah, it's a really great option for like, you know, basically getting like the, the best possible image you can get for depending on what type of device you're on. And so now that we got that out of the way, I actually want to show like another way we go ahead and improve these images even more using the SDK. And that is by applying the parameters uh, compress and format. So to do that, just do image x param params equals brackets brackets, and then do auto and just do compress format. So this is going to be do this is going to be doing uh, two different things. One is going to be compressing the images uh, so that like basically they weigh less. And then not only that, this format right here, what this is going to be doing is that that parameter is going to be looking at whatever browser you're on and determine the best possible uh, image format that'd be appropriate for that browser. Like for example, uh, we now actually provide like ABIF as one of the image formats that you can use for your pictures. So all of these pictures are now being converted into ABIF because, you know, I'm on Google Chrome, which allows that type of like extension. But if for whatever reason, someone was looking at my app at a browser that does not support ABIF, it would go down to the next best one that it actually is compatible with. Yeah, so if you switched, uh, you know, Firefox, then it's gonna to switch to WebP, if you switch to IE, it's going to switch to JPEG. So it'll do lots of different uh, intelligent switches for you. And, and if you're not familiar with the idea of different image formats, um, you know, WebP is something that's much lighter than JPEG. And then AVIF goes even further, much lighter than, than WebP. And, uh, and they all are lighter, but they're not sacrificing quality. They look really good. And, and ideally, there's tons of formats and you should just never have to worry about it, right? <laughs> just put this auto format and just let us always constantly intelligently switch it for you. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah, that is actually really, it's really cool about it is that sometime in the future, if someone makes uh, a, an extension that reduces it even more than ABIF, then it will default to that. So it's kind of like feature-proofing your code. Okay, so now that we went ahead and got all of this code added, you can already see just by like a handful of lines of code, we've already dramatically improved all of the images that you got on your app. But now we're gonna take it a step further by incorporating lazy sizes so that you can have lazy loading capabilities on your application. So now going on, now moving on, let's talk about lazy loading. And to figure out and learn more about lazy loading, you can just actually search in the document for React ImageX. So just look up uh, lazy loading and you can find it down here at the bottom. And to actually incorporate lazy loading into your application itself, you're going to need to install it. So you can see this link right here will send you directly to the page where you can learn how to install it, but I'm going to walk you through it since you're watching this video. So scrolling down here, uh, one of the first things you're going to want to do is 
install the NPM package itself. So let's go to our code editor. I am going to go ahead and stop that. So just grab npm install lazy sizes save. So that'll install the package. Now, while that's installing, I'm going to go ahead and grab the next thing, which are these two things right here. So you're going to need these in your project for it to actually work. There's one last thing that I absolutely want to make sure I can't stress this enough because this was something that I totally got lost on on why my React app wasn't working the way it should with this platform. Uh, look up React by searching it and look at look for this extension right here. This extension is used for React and Angular. So uh, if you want your React to be reactive, make sure you include, include this extension. Otherwise, like the main reason you're using React won't work. So go ahead and just copy this line right here. Go back to your editor and paste it below. So, so this section was good and all, but once again, I'm going to go ahead and just comment it out so we can see the before and after. Now, going back here to lazy loading to make, make it really simple, all we got to do is copy this code right here and just start adding things. So, we got all the lazy stuff added. We got class name lazy load, so it knows to be like a lazy load type uh, application. Um, next thing, copy all of this right here, because we're going to need this for the source. So now it's just doing the same thing. And for sizes, we're going to set this to auto. All right. so. That's everything you need in order to actually get lazy sizes to work. So save it. So we we'll do that, do npm run start. Might take a second to load. All right. So now, as you can see, we end up getting lazy load. And it's a bit hard to tell, but you can actually see like when you refresh, there's actually like no image in the background as it lazy loads. Like there's, it just kind of is a blank square and then it just loads the image. So what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take this a step further and incorporate LQIP. If you wanna go ahead and add LQIP, all you gotta do is like, you know, from the lazy loading section, just scroll down a little bit and you will find that section right here. And you can see the code is pretty much exactly the same except this little chunk of code right here just has to be added to the bottom. So just copy that right here and paste it. Now I already have an image I want to add. I'm going to go ahead and show you the image real quick in the browser so you know exactly which image I'm doing and like what exactly it is I'm doing with it. So you see that's an extremely small image. So this right here is just the error message that we've been using, but all I'm doing is that I'm using the image X parameter W to set it to, to have it equal to 10. So that way it loads really small, but it gets stretched out when it gets uh, displayed. Yeah, it's it's kind of a, a trick, right? Like, you don't, it's, it's, uh, it's not actually technically low quality, it's just small, but CSS is resizing it to be bigger. So then it looks blurry or low quality or whatever you want to call it, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting trick. So once you paste that in, you can hit save. And you'll notice when you refresh the page, like you actually see like a background going on right there. Like it's really, it's low quality, you know, as at least that's how we want it to look. Now scroll down, see if it shows up. There we go, see? Yeah. It's, you gotta be pretty quick, you know, that's the one thing about it, but you can tell like, yeah, like it's actually there and it's like working with the lazy loading. Try slowing down your browser to like 3G and just see what happens. You got it. There you go. Now do a hard refresh here. There we go. If it was slower, 
you now have something in its place, right? And I think something just to note here, like if you see this 21, 22, 23, 24 requests, you see it kind of keeps tackling up at the bottom right there. Mm -hmm. It's these requests aren't happening until you get to them, right? That's the whole point of lazy loading, right? Is is don't actually load stuff below the fold until you until you get there. Because the way your the performance of your site gets gets ranked, it's the idea of how fast it loads and becomes interactive. And to achieve a high score, you only need to do the top items right away. Yeah. Like it's it's actually like really impressive how like these tiny little code changes you can do can dramatically improve the experience and quality of the images you're giving to your app. Now, I think we could go the extra mile now is instead of just having one image be the lazy, the low L clip, you could actually do the image that is, is the actual image for each movie. Yeah, you could do that. So to do that, be something as simple as this. And then you would just do a clean up my code. Oh, it's going to clean up that. All right. Well, and, and but now you can make that small too, right? Like if you go back to it. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, do the do the plus and question mark. Yeah, width equals 10. Yeah. Maybe even auto equals format compressed too. That'd be nice. And we did everything right. Should be able to see that work. All right, three G. There we go. See, it looks blurry, but it's just a small image is what it is. But now it's kind of nice that it's each actual image. And again, if you weren't on a slow connection, it wouldn't be noticeable, right? Um, but that's why you do this. You do this to serve every type of audience, right? If you got a fast audience, they're getting a good experience. You have an audience uh, that has slower internet strength, you're still offering a good user experience to them as well. Nice. Well, hey, you know what? I got to say, now that we've created like this much better user experience, how's about we go ahead and upload it to the cloud? Let's and do I think it. We, like, let's do that using for sell. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to upload uh, all of this code to GitHub using a tool called GitHub Desktop. So real quick, I'm just going to make a folder on my computer to kind of store like the code in. I'll just call it final, make it easier to find. Now here, I just got to um, create new repo. And I'm gonna select it for final. Now I'm gonna call it imagex tmdb uh, final app. And then after I'm done like creating that, I have to go ahead and actually start. I have to uh, publish repository. So it's actually like in my GitHub account. Now I'm just gonna drag and drop all of the necessary code into here. So ignoring the node modules, you won't need to upload that, but everything else you will need. And of course, you know, and weirdly enough, you will not need to um, copy over any of like the .env files or anything like that. But we'll, be, we'll take care of that later with for sale. I'm gonna push all the code. Get add everything. Yep. So get add all, get commit done. Now get push to send everything out to GitHub. 
Okay. So now that we have all the code on GitHub, let's go to Forcell and actually like import everything and actually get it uh, all this code uploaded to the cloud. So to do that, you know, your page might not look like this. It might look more empty and you'll see a, a button to tell you to import. So just go ahead and click on that. But your settings should look something like this. So you, you should be able to select whichever uh, GitHub repo you have. Um, you will need to actually like, you know, give for sale permission to have access to your GitHub account. So go through the steps to go ahead and connect the two of them. And once you do, just look for the look for the um, GitHub repo that you have launched. Mm -hmm. This is the one I just launched to the cloud, the ImageX TMB final app. Click import. That's one thing we need to do. So, you know, obviously you don't want your um, .env files like publicly accessible on your GitHub account. But one of the things you can do is that with for sale is that you can just set environment variables with it. So we're gonna go back to our code and grab, grab the, uh, the actual variable itself. And now I see to grab the name of the variable. So just click add. So now that environment variable is stored and we can click deploy. Now this process usually takes about a little less than a minute, like for sales surprisingly quick for uploading code to the cloud. So we'll just, you know, after about a minute, you should have your website uploaded. So while we wait for it to load, Jamie, do you want to uh, look back at the old, uh, the old app that we hadn't even modified? Yes. So as you see, you know, the, here's the old ad and with the, the code, the... Yeah, this was before we added ImageX to everything, right? And, and, it, and it had uh, everything from TMDB. And I, th I think I can see in the next tab, you ran the page speed report, right? Like just, you mentioned earlier, like it's a, it's a good score, right? It's still 85. Um, but, yeah, it's yeah. pretty good, but I do agree. Like, you know, we could definitely make it better and I'm looking forward to the code getting uploaded so we can run it well, through page speed and see what it's you, like. If you scroll down, like it will tell us what was wrong, what's wrong with the score, right? Like. It's the largest contentful paint and the properly sizing images and next gen formats, right? Like, like it's it's saying essentially if these two items were fixed, the score would be a lot better, right? Exactly. I think it's gonna be kind of nice now looking at Russell, we'll get a URL and we can plug that in here and see the see if it's still there. Exactly. Let's go back and check. All right, so. Assuming we did everything right and for sale gives you confetti if it wants you uploaded your code to the cloud. All right, and now we have a URL that we can test and we can even confirm like looking in the code if we actually like uploaded the right stuff. You can inspect and see that we got all of our ImageX functionality that we built out working just fine. Great. Now let's go ahead and try page speed. HP, it's pretty great. Like if you've never used it before and you're curious how fast your website can actually run with like mobile and desktop, you just take your URL and you paste it in here and it gives you, a, it actually explains some of the things that you can actually improve on and give you an overall score. Hasn't been found yet. Gonna run it one more time. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I mean, yeah, it just got uploaded like a minute ago. I'm not surprised. It keep hmm. going down. I think this is just, yeah, oh. so that's just Chrome user data at the top. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, okay, 97. Oh, this is mobile. What's it on desktop? 100. 100, and the best part is when you scroll down, those two main issues that we had compared to like, you know, the pro properly sized image and next gen format, all of those are completely gone. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, because that's that this goes to show that's literally what was causing the lower score. Yeah. So, so I mean, this kind of leads into that segue, segue, right? Of why why should you use ImageX? Why not just use the other URL you have or another, you know, image service? Well, 
ImageX does a great job of optimizing the images, delivering them, and giving you that really great score. The score there isn't just from resizing, it's also from intelligently formatting. You know, being smart enough to know that it's Chrome and doing AVIF it is a massive boost in the performance as well. ImageX is itself, it covers um, many spectrums. It starts out as a management tool. It connects to wherever your images are stored. Or in this example, if it's an active URL API service, you can even literally just connect to publicly available URLs and not even have to store the images. And then from there, it renders them and optimizes them on the fly and then delivers them via uh, Fastly, which is a great serving CDN. So it's a really great service. It's simple to use and, and free to use. If you do want to get started, there's no secret, you know, Jamie is the best code you have to use when you sign up. It's just imagex.com. It's free. There's a free service for you to use. If you do want to see more great videos about imagex, check out our YouTube channel. We have great documentation and follow us on Twitter. Otherwise, thank you so much, Jamie. It's been, been great. No, I had a blast doing this and I'm looking forward to doing more videos with this in the future. All right, see you, Jamie. See ya.